That four years ago, my very first conference was also in Albuquerque, not in this location, but uh, but uh, I remember the day we met and uh, and we just started working together almost immediately and have been ever since, and it's been great. Uh, as you all know, David is the guy who does all the technical stuff, and uh, I'm the guy who figures out who's doing what. So, <laughs> but. Uh, the talk he's going to be giving is not his paper. It's the one exception we've made in this conference of someone pre pre presenting a paper from somebody else that's not attending. The, uh, the author is from Australia, and uh, we have two other authors from Australia, so there probably shouldn't be an excuse. But uh, anyway, James Maxwell is kind of, I guess I like to call him the Wall Thornhill <laughs> of, uh, of expansion tectonics. What, what Wall is to uh, electro, electric universe, and, and perhaps Don Scott, um, James Maxlow is today for to the expansion tectonics and, and just as a little bit of background and maybe I'm stealing a little David's thunder but this idea of the earth, expanding earth is um, one that has been around for decades probably since the 30s and maybe even before that and one that was actually entertained in mainstream for a while until around 1960 I think the idea of uh, subduction processes became you know pretty much the accepted thing and around that time, a guy named Warren Carey became uh, sort of the guy in the world that was the, the, the main representative for this, this uh, underground idea of expansion tectonics. But, um, but now he's deceased, and, and the guy who's really kind of carried on his work was also from Australia. I don't know why so many great people are from Australia, but they are. <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, is, is also carrying on this work, and that's James Maxlow. We got him to write a paper for our proceedings, so I'm really proud to have that in our proceedings, and David is going to be presenting that now. So, David Dillston. Okay, uh, yeah, you did steal a little bit, but... Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'm going to hold this, since for shorties. Okay, um, basically, one of the questions you're going to get is why is James Max Lowe considered to be the uh, Wall Thornhill of expansion tectonics? I know this by studying, and uh, that is we have on the internet, on the World Science Database, the largest collection of scientists. We have 82 of them who are living in and who are deceased, and all their papers and books. And I spent about six months doing that and uh, came across James Max Lowe. Yeah, and in fact, uh, he does have his uh, own website. I actually helped him with that to get him established. Um, he is a geologist from Australia, worked most of his life not thinking about expansion tectonics. And he got this letter, uh, you can see from Sa Samuel Warren Carey, dated in 1993, basically telling him, uh, I'd like you to take over. And he was reluctant. He told me he just didn't want to really do that. He got his PhD later on in life. and. Uh, I asked him in many conversations I've had with him what was the turning point for him, what turned him from a, a regular geologist into expansion tectonics person, and that basically was the plotting of the South Pole, which starts in the middle of, of Africa and works its way down to the uh, South, um, South, uh, South Pole. And because of that, he said at that point he couldn't turn back. And since then, uh, in my opinion, he is the greatest living geologist today who is out there talking about expansion tectonics. Very humble man, very similar to uh, Walt Thornhill. Um, expansion tectonics embraces the existing concepts of Earth expansion, expanding Earth, and growing Earth, and they are all synonymous. The concept of expanding Earth has been known since the 18, late 1800s, and, and small Earth modeling has been around since the modeling studies of Alt Ott Hil Hilgenberg in the 1930s and Klaus Vogel, Vogel during the 1980s. Early modeling studies relied on visual fit of continents on small earth models and were deemed inconclusive by the scientific community. Klaus Vogel was one of, uh, one, one of the first to use modern seafloor mapping to, uh, data to constrain plate assemblage and this demonstrated that all the continents can be assembled together on a Pangaea small earth, approximately 55% of the present earth radius. Um, if we go to the next slide, uh, Greg, uh, I'm going to go, uh, whoops, I went, we're just going to go forward, there's a lot here, can you click on that uh, and get this going? Uh, it's quite amazing. 
Uh, basically, what you see here is a model that was made by uh, James Maxlow in the 2000s. The models are five of a series of 24 models constructed by James Maxlow and during the 2000, extending from the Archean Eon four billion years ago to the present day plus one model extrapolated to five million years in the future. I'm not sure this goes all that far back, uh, but one of the things you may want to see is when you, when you, if it's already gone by, was the Jurassic period. There's, a, there's an engineer in Europe who wrote a book on, on the largest animals' sizes, how they decreased over time which matches perfectly to one of the biggest problems with uh, um, um, dinosaurs, and that is how can they pump blood uh, at, at such huge uh, sizes. And the reason is, is the Earth was smaller and in size and mass. So you can see there's the late Jurassic. That's when the, a lot of the dinosaurs were. And you can imagine, you can have these huge animals because of the, uh, the gravitational field was smaller. Again, these are all, believe it or not, made by printing out little slits. If you look in the, his paper, you'll see these little wedges. And he took styrofoam balls and basically pasted those on and then made these. OK? Um, speak, uh, unfortunately, modern plate tectonic theory, what has happened? What is happening is that is because there is no perceived alternative to plate tectonics. Modern uh, global data is being uh, sublimally forced into fitting the theory. Because there are no recognized alternatives to plate tectonics, the scientific community is being misled into believing that shortfalls in a plate tectonics theory will eventually be resolved by more research. The statement above, therefore, does not apply to PT, we'll call it, and hence, hence uh, contravenes scientific principle. It is also unfortunate that, that expansion tectonics, which by the way I think James Maxlow did coin that term, is traditionally rejected by the scientific community simply because there is no motor or mechanism for increase in Earth radius over time. This rejection is based on outdated and emotive opinion dating back to before the 1970s, and none of the modern global data collected in support of plate tectonics has been applied to expansion tectonics until now. Geolo uh, geophysical evidence is outlined in, in his paper. The evidence provided uh, provided proof that oceans are increasing their surface areas with time and provided a mechanism whereby new volcanic material is intruded along the full length of the centrally located mid-ocean ridge spreading uh, centers. Unfortunately, this, is, this early evidence was based on surveys carried out in the North Atlantic Ocean and plate tectonics was uh, conceived based on this early evidence. From the evidence, it was assumed that the Atlantic Ocean was increasing in surface area, and hence the contents were moving, continents were moving apart. It was then assumed that Earth radius was static, hence the new surfaces are, gen new surfaces are generated with the Atlantic Ocean, must therefore be disposed of elsewhere. These, this, that elsewhere was assumed to be the Pacific o Ocean ring of fire, and subduction was invented to dispose of this excess seafloor crust. Since the commission of the geological map of the world and UNESCO completed mapping of all the oceans in 1990, primarily to, to qualify plate tectonics, ironically, what was what what that what, what the what they found was that as well as the Atlantic Ocean increasing in surface area, uh, the arrows will animate this. You can see here. Uh, um, along with the mid-ocean spreading center, all of the other oceans are also increasing their surface areas away from their own mid-ridge spreading centers, and in particular, the Pacific Ocean, which is spreading at the rate of more, oops, which is spreading at the, the, the rate of more than all the other oceans combined, approximately 12 to 4 centimeters, 12, 12 to 14 centimeters a year, compared to 1 to 2 centimeters uh, per year for other oceans. This is, very, this is a re very real enigma for plate tectonics, the point, uh, to the point where very few people use or are aware of this global mapping. In contrast, this mapping was provided has provided expansion tectonics with a unique opportunity to measure surface areas of the seafloor mapping and from this calculate, uh, calculate ancient earth radii from for each 
time interval represented by the seafloor mapping and then derive a formula for the rate of change in Earth radius over time. By removing the constant radius premise, expansion tectonic Earth models were constructed by simply removing each colored seafloor crustal stripe in succession and assembling the remaining plates on a reduced radi radius Earth. Um, the, plates, uh, the plates for each model constructed were found to be assemble, uh, to assemble with better than 99% fit accuracy without the need to invoke pre-existing crust, without the need uh, to arbitrarily fragment continents, and without the need to set up ex excess seafloor crusts beneath the continents. The process was continued back uh, to the Triassic period, and there it was found that all the continental crusts plus the global network of continental shelf sediments merged to form a single encompassing Pangaea supercontinent uh, geological evidence from across adjoining marginal margins coincided precisely as well as additional geographic, biographic, geophysical, and climatic evidence. So by removing the continental shelf sediments and returning these sediments back to the exposed lands where they were originally eroded from, it was found that the radius of the Earth could be further decreased and all the remnant continent crust crustal plates refitted precisely together on a small Earth model at approximately 50% of the present Earth radius. As can be seen in this model, I make sure it's the right one, uh, the geological, the, the geology from across adjoining boundaries matches precisely. Also shown is the distribution of published, published ancient shorelines shown as in blue lines. The, these shorelines demonstrate that the volume of the oceans is not constant as presumed and demonstrates that ocean waters and atmospheric gases originate from the mantle and, and degas in sympathy with extrusion of seafloor volcanic rocks along with mid-ocean spreading ridges. Very amazing. On this model, the exposed land is called Pangaea, and the seas from the network of relatively shallow seas covering lower sediment sedimentary basins. Uh, the red line is the ancient equator, which was located by plotting published paleomagnetic pole data on each model. Each pole plotted are, are diametrically opposed north and south poles for each model, adding further evidence for expansion tectonics and, and Earth process. Again, that's what changed uh, James from a, a mainstream plate tectonics to expansion tectonics then. Um, oh, there, there's one. Maybe you want to s click on that one. This is the Pangaea. So instead of, as uh, another favorite person of mine who I call a scientist, uh, Neil Adams says, if we were to have Pangaea, we'd have all the land mass on one side. All models show that there would have to be an island on the other side that would automatically form because of the rotation of the Earth and the water. So Pangaea is uh, fraught with problems. A couple of quotes from past researchers. Yeah, it, it, it is very difficult to believe that the fitting together is due to chance. And of course, as my animations demonstrate, there is a simplicity in the process that cannot be denied. Hence my question, uh, that is, uh, hence my question, that is this fact or mere coincidence? This is one of the things I've never, when I've talked to play tectonics people, they, they give you silence, they, they don't say anything. <laughs> As outlined in my paper, Earth radius was determined by measuring surfaces areas of each of the seafloor stripes and converting this to, to radius. The only assumption used was that the, the seafloor striping represents rocks that have been intruded along from the full length of each mid-ocean ridge over a set, of, uh, inter, uh, a set interval of time and has been fully fixed in the, ro the rock record, i.e. XX crust that has not been removed by subduction. 
The red dots represent models constructed and constrained by the seafloor surface area data, and the red squares are models constrained by, the, by continental data. The graph shows that exp the expansion process is ex exponential, showing a very slow increase in Earth radius of less than the thickness of a human hair for the first 75% of Earth history, following, followed by a steady acceleration increase to present day. The rate of increase in radius suggests that the Earth will re reach the size of Jupiter or Saturn by about 500 million years into the future. The core, mat, core mantle is systematic only. Formula for the exponential rate of increase in Earth radius from the Archean eon to present day, plus extrapolation into the future. This formula can also be used to the, uh, in the study of paleomagnetics to determine ancient pole positions from remnant magnet, magnetism preserved in rocks. It also forms the basis for studying the kinematics of Earth expansion and determining the rate of increase for each of the kinematic variables. Kinematics is, uh, of increase in surface area, volume, and radius derive from empirical surface data, area data. Each curve shows a prolonged period of very slow in, uh, of increase for the first 75% of Earth history, followed by steady to accelerating increase to present day. As outlined in, in, in Jim's paper, density and surface gravity are currently indeterminate. The graph shows the two endpoint variables defined by A, a constant mass uh, scenario, and B, an increasing mass scenario. Modeling studies demonstrate that the constant mass scenario is unten untenable, with both density and surface gra gravity unacceptable for past errors, and similarity of a reduction of gravity to zero by 300 million years into the future is also unacceptable. All evidence points to an increasing mass scenario as, rep as best representing the geological and geophysical evidence. The scenario also suggests that the surface gravity is steadily increasing over time, which agrees with the body, uh, with body mass evidence from dinosaurs. They lived at a time when the surface gravity was between one-third and one-half of present surface gravity. It was quite shocking for me as a person from the NPA to hear this geologist come up on his own that mass is increasing. Not only he knows of accretion that exists, but that's not what he thinks it can be. He cannot explain it with only accretion that people think happens on the Earth, which is things coming from outside. A listing of present day rates of increase in standard variables for those mathematically inclined. So I have those, has those uh, there for you. Scientific dilemma. A statement I made a number of years ago, a very co uh, co uh, Copernican statement that will definitely change the course of geoscience. Um, unbeknown to most science, we have now reached a critical point in the development of science. One seemingly trivi trivial reorientation of scientific perspective from a static radius Earth to an actively increasing Earth radius viewpoint has the potential to completely negate the established consensus and opinions of su and scientific beliefs of today. Very much what uh, Neil Adams says, it changes everything. Also very interesting, again for geologists, this is the guy to look at. Neil Adams is great for you to get into the middle, but if you want the real geology behind, this is a great compliment to that. A schematic for a suggested causal mechanism based on empirical observation from rock record. Our most ancient rocks tell us that the mantle and surface temperatures were more, much hotter than what they are now. This leads me to suggest that pre-Archean Earth was incandescent and molten. This also agrees with our age dating where our most ancient dates are consistently no greater than about four billion years old. Very profound. Age dating requires that the various min min uh, minerals being dated must have crystallized and must have cooled enough to preserve to the present day. 
in layman's terms, the reason we don't go beyond four billion is not because the Earth is only four billion years old. I do not see any evidence for cold or hot accretion. As mentioned, the geological evidence suggests to me that it was molten during the pre-Archean, during the pre-Archean. Cooling then established the ancient Earth, forming a stable crust. Ongoing accumulation of new material at the core mantle boundary resulted in an increase in mantle volume, giving rise to mantle swell, which is th then manifested as crustal extension at the surface. Ongoing continental crustal extension ultimately led to crustal rupture, rifting and breaking, forming the modern continents and opening to form the modern oceans. On an expanding expansion tectonic model, the seafloor volcanic rocks are exposed and quenched mantle rocks as, a, as distinct from the much thicker, thicker continental crust. A challenge to physics. The, to accept the challenge and find me a convincing motor and mechanism to explain the observed empirical increase to Earth's surface area and radius through time, Dr. James Maxwell, 2012. I know I will see Mr. Lucas up at the microphone. Okay. <laughs> and that's not a, um, a, a, that's a compliment. The sole reason why Earth expansion, expansion tectonics, has not been accepted by the scientific community is because no motor or mechanism behind explaining the increase, in, increasing radi Earth radius has been forthcoming. This is primarily because observations from modeling studies have been carried out by people with non-physical expertise. Because of their, the, empirical observation, uh, the empirical observations have been consistently rejected by the scientific community, the question is to where the excess matter comes from and, ha and from has not been required to be answered and hence has not been taken seriously. I ch uh, the challenge I pose, James, to, to physicists is to accept the empirical evidence as viable and to explain the motor and mechanism behind the matter formation and accumulation within the Earth to cause an increase in radius through time, or to come up with alternative suggestions to satisfy the empirical radial, radial, radial evidence. Again, um, if you don't know, he has a book. If you have not read it, um, I think the difference that I see in his book, especially if you're geology, and one of the fascinating things is whereas Neil Adams has a great three-dimensional, very expensive video which shows the expansion, which gets you into it like it did for me, uh, his book and on his models you notice are very different from the ones for Neil Adams, which they are just regular maps. His maps are geological. James Maxlow spent 25 of his years in the field as a geologist working for companies around Australia. So he is, he came from that background. And I talked to him many times, I said, well, once the, the, one of the criticisms of expansion today, which we've gone further, is that, well, what happened before 200 million, 170 million years ago when things started really growing? Well, he has an answer, and those answers are, can be found in his book and go online. Um, so uh, that's all that I have, and if we have any questions or comments, and I hope, uh, James, I did you uh, proud. Thank you. Here he comes. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe it. Well, I, I'd like to jump in first and just say I, I, the last three presentations here were uh, quite a variety, and uh, and that's not bad. I mean, I'm just I'm pleased that we have this ability to be open and willing to look at new ideas. But I, I just it, it seems to me that uh, that one possible answer, one that I'd like to entertain anyway. Uh, for the uh, the question of mass accretion could be these electrical processes su suggested by Michael and suggested by Paul Anderson yesterday that we you know that is the idea that and Don Scott as well was saying that you know these uh, these vertical currents actually uh, accumulate matter in, as they as they you know uh, travel and and in the process they, they deposit matter might Saying this correctly, Michael? Shake your head. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, that could be the answer to this question that seems to be uh, so much difficulty for the uh, expanding Earth idea. Thank, yes, thanks. Again, we're looking for two things, not only for the expansion itself, but increase in mass. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> uh, the uh, work that I've done on gravity uh, seems to indicate that gravity is decaying and that it decayed 
very rapidly in the past compared to the present, kind of like an exponential decay. And uh, it appears that the uh, Earth uh, crust did not immediately respond to the decay of gravity. And so over time, it became under more and more stress and finally expanded. And so the expansion's been more recent than the decay of gravity. So the decay of gravity gives you the mechanism for the expanding Earth. As far as I know, there is no other good mechanism. Does your method, though, also explain mass and the increase in mass? Uh, the method that I have, uh, you mentioned the animals. Uh, the expansion of the Earth causes the atmosphere to become thinner, and that causes more cosmic rays to destroy the telomeres on DNA, which reduces lifespan. So we have records of people living a lot longer in the past than they do now. Also, uh, the larger the, the density of oxygen goes down, and so the current oxygen level that we have today is not sufficient to power a dinosaur. We'd have to have, if you'd have to put them in a, what they call it, a bathymetric chamber or whatever it is that has higher oxygen density for them to live. Uh, and then there's their size. If they had the, the higher oxygen density, they could move on the current, with the current value of gravity that we have. But in, uh, if it was higher, if the mass of the Earth was higher, if the Earth is expanding, and the mass is changing rapidly uh, because gravity is decaying in rapidly in the present time. We don't see it decaying that much today. Are you saying that gravity, the uh, force of gravity is getting smaller? Force of gravity is getting smaller and the Earth is expanding because it can't, the crust of the Earth cannot hold in this material which wants to expand. Okay, that conflicts with, with his study which he says that the uh, mass is increasing. Um, I mean, that's what he's Right. Claiming by evidence, we, we don't. We don't. The, it, the the rate of change of mass is so small that we haven't been able to detect it yet. Mm -hmm. In the but you know we've only been making accurate measurements for a few hundred years. So, uh, but the rate of expansion seems to be small. So my my idea was that the uh, the uh, decay of gravity occurred very rapidly during the initial years of of the earth and then it has the earth's crust has begun to ex to respond uh, much later in time okay and so so that would answer the question of the mass as far as the animals are concerned the mass was basically the same as today mm -hmm. okay and so okay all right well thank you my name is randy wood uh i'd like to suggest that the mechanism for increasing the mass of the Earth is due to neutrino radiation from the sun, mm -hmm. uh, which interacts with the plasma core of the Earth and converts part of those neutrinos back to a mass, thereby uh, expanding the Earth's size. Uh, and that would also suggest that perhaps at some time in the past that the orbit of the Earth was further away from the sun getting less radiation, therefore it ex expanded much slower at that point, and, and at some point perhaps was moved closer to the sun, getting... Are, are, is the earth, is the earth, isn't the Earth getting further from the sun now? Uh, that I'm not sure about. As, as to your idea with the uh, neutrinos, or whatever particle, um, it's very similar to, I think, a, a very interesting hypothesis, which is with Neil Adams, which is the pair production meaning uh, things, I think one of the things I see in all my re research of this area is that we have to come up with some mechanism whereby uh, mass is becoming, uh, it being created inside, because all the evidence geologically is saying that. Where is the oil coming from? It comes inside the Earth. It's not squashed dinosaurs. Where is the water coming from? Inside. The mass, I think there's mass that's accreting, yes. But from what James Maxlow, as a geologist, says, he thinks there is mass increase. And I think that's why he's turning to us, because he sees this is unusual. That it's not, ma of course, mass doesn't get created from nothing. Something happens. So uh, the prime matter particles, as by, um, uh, or whatever you want to call them, you know, people call them neutrinos, whatever you want to call them, is a viable, I think, a, a, um, answer.
Okay. Can we get this a couple more here? Well, yeah, we need to make it short. We're, we're <laughs> this is the last one for the morning? Uh, yeah. 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 If people want to leave, maybe you want to leave, that's fine. Yeah, last question. Yes, I know uh, very interesting explanation that was offered by one of the Russian scientists of the increase of the uh, volume of the Earth. He showed mathematically that if inside the solid core of the Earth there are some thermonuclear reactions, and that will make it's not the mass but the volume would increase because of the amount of light that atoms appear. And he showed the whole uh, chain of chemical reactions that would lead off the appearance of water, excess of water on the surface of the Earth. And what's interesting that it's, he believes it's not the mass mostly, but the volume would increase due to those nuclear reactions because again, from, right. heavy, ele nu from heavy elements, light elements will appear. We'd like, I'd like to get that scientists work into our, our, our area because one of the things that is true, there are many, a sort of a nuclear explanation for the sudden expansion, that there is a critical a, cri a critical mass that has been achieved and the expansion. But he uh, did it for Earth. He right, believed right. the same thing. He believed in the There's another person in, in the MPA who did it not only for Earth, but says that the Earth will turn into Jupiter, Jupiter will turn into a solar system. Um, there's another guy who has the same, but we'd like to get that information into our records. What's also interesting that he showed that the appearance of water. Showed yes, and oil. The other two that other people have shown is methane and oil. Okay, thank you. Uh, the average temperature of Earth right now is 14 degrees Celsius. Uh, do you know anything how it changed? Uh, in the process you showed, how the average temperature of Earth could change. Um, yeah, he did mention that the Earth was much hotter uh, back, but this is a very long-term thing. So, And again, if you want to leave for lunch, you can leave for lunch. That's no problem. <laughs> Thank you, David. Excellent work. Thank you. Thank you.